My tips for training the ChumQ form are actually very similar uh, to my tips for training the Siyunum Tao form. One, you should practice, if you practice at home, you should do it in a, in a room that's well ventilated. You want to make sure you're getting plenty of air. You want to focus on body mechanics because again, that's the, one of the main focus of the forms. Uh, there are deeper meanings within the forms uh, and other things that the forms are training. The forms are obviously training your joints and your muscles and your tendons to help you generate power. But mainly, whenever we're doing any kind of solo work, uh, we're really trying to focus on body mechanics because uh, that's really one of the best times to do it. You, like I said before, you don't have somebody in front of you who's really trying to punch you or kick you so you can kind of do these things in a very relaxed way and that's the best way uh, to focus on body mechanics is in a stress-free environment because if you're worried about somebody attacking you or hitting you, uh, you will generally tend to go into threat mode where things are going to clam up and these are uh, going to make your body mechanics much worse. So specifically for the chum cue form, it's very important to realize that now with the chum cue form we have kicks, we have steps, we have movements, it's definitely much more dynamic than the Siyunum Tao form, but that doesn't mean that the Chum Kyu form needs to be trained fast or full speed or like the same way you would do it in a fight. Because again, if you train the form really, really quick, uh, sometimes you think that it's dynamic or maybe you think that it's a little bit closer to fighting, but in reality, uh, you can be hiding a lot of slop, a lot of incorrect movements with speed. And in fact, a lot of people who are not very good uh, at uh, body mechanics or details or they don't know a lot of stuff will generally hide it with speed. Uh, they say you can hide a lot of slop with speed and this is not what we want to do. When you practice the chum cue form, make sure you do everything slowly and correctly first. Um, in our system of Wing Chun, uh, when it comes to doing the kicks, we like to extend, we like to put power in the kicks, we like to fully launch our uh, punch or our arms when, when we strike, but that doesn't mean that the pace of the form is hectic or it's done fast or, or it's done uh, with, with a lot of power, it's still supposed to be done in a relaxed way. Um, for the chum cue form, again, you want to follow a similar idea which uh, we have in a lot of the basic training in, in Wing Chun, which is a Chinese model called Dim Dim Jing. Dim Dim Jing means every point clear. And what we mean by every point clear is that when you practice the form, uh, again, if you do everything really fast, the, the points get muddied and they, and they get kind of compressed together. And that's, again, a problem because in Wing Chun, we're not talking about choreography, we're talking about set points. So if you mash everything together, you're missing a lot of the set points. So it's very important, for example, to realize uh, that there are a number of points within one movement. For example, you have one point, second point, third point, fourth point, fifth point. And you want to see all those points when you practice the form rather than just kind of throwing this and coming back like that, which you see, unfortunately, a lot of people do. And then a lot of the individual points which need to be practiced with a partner are missing. So make sure you practice every point clear, all right, and you practice everything slowly and correctly and smoothly. And of course, depending on your lineage, depending on what version of Wing Chun you do, you want to follow your Sifu's corrections.